بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد Sometimes a person's secrets may be a deception that has trapped that person. So once a person gets involved in a sin, in maasiyat, in disobedience, he has to make it a secret. Somebody is into gambling, somebody is into music, somebody is into pornography, somebody is into having an affair. So he has to keep it a secret. So it's a deception upon a deception. Because that which a person is engaged in is something that will destroy him, it will wipe him out, it will wreck his entire life. And he's keeping it as a secret. A secret is generally something which is valuable, which is treasured. Here yeah, this is destructive. And we trying to maintain it as a secret. And that's the reality of life where that which needed to be made a secret is no more secret. Any good we do, we promote it. Any evil we do, we promote it. So how the times have changed. Where our good actions are supposed to be hidden. And our evil actions are supposed to be hidden even more. Nowadays people boast of their good deeds Worse than that, they pose and boast and post and promote the evil actions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna Allah la ghaniyun anil alameen. Allah doesn't need anybody. The deen of Allah doesn't need anybody. Allah is independent. Even for the preservation of deen, Allah does not need anybody with regards to the Abraha to destroy the Baytullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have used something of magnitude to teach a lesson. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to teach a greater lesson that if we need to wipe you out, we don't need to show means of power. Allah is actually teaching humanity the power and the qudrat of Allah. Tayran Ababil, pebbles and a small bird wiped out a big great entourage of elephants, a army. So even to preserve Deen, Allah does not need us. And with the secrets, it's where a person decides to compromise. The day you decide you want to raise your gaze, the day you decide you want to swipe, the day you decide you want to give your cell number, the day you decide you need to make a first move, remember that's the time of compromise and compromise will continue till the end, illa mashallah. And it will lead to a person's destruction. So the person is making that move, do I want to lose my name, my reputation, my family's reputation? Do I want to lose the context, the, the, the structure that I've built for so many years over this womb, over this ambition, over this khaish? Is it really worth it? So some people say, but why are we highlighting the evil, the plotting in the Kayda Kunna Azim? The plotting of women are great. Because Allah firstly has said, Inna kaida kunna azim. The plotting of women are great. And Inna kaida shaitan kana da'ifa. The plotting of shaitan is weak. Secondly, when something is highlighted, it's to warn, not to rebuke. So speaking about the magnitude and, and the gravity of the plotting of women, is not attacking the fraternity of women. Like somebody speaks of the harms of weapons. So if it is abuse, then it can be destruction. And if it is utilized in the right avenue, there will be construction. If the women of the Ummah utilize their potential, then the Ummah will get made. Like Hajar radiallahu anha. Khadija radiallahu anha, 
Fatima radiyallahu anha wa anhun and if that potential is wasted then it's destruction so we have to understand that by mentioning these points it is highlighting the potential and secondly is that we may be falling into that situation personally where we utilize our potential in the wrong avenues. Thirdly, our structures may be compromised through somebody else plotting. So sometimes you have to worry of people in your own camp. Otherwise, dunya is deceptive. While we're in maktab, and we were favored by one of those studs. So close friends, one day, one of them, and they all plotted together to put the wallet into our juzdan. And then they made it like it was missing and lost and stolen. And said, no, we need to search everybody's juzdans. And the wallet was found there. So because you're the favorite of the ustad, now you need to, this is your friend, somebody you see every day. But even your own friends cannot tolerate you being the favorite of an Ustad. And this is at a young age. So can we understand the mindset of human beings and the nature intrinsic? So we need to be careful. Abu Hazim, Rahmatullah say, Iyakum wa dunya. Beware, be weary of dunya. فَإِنَّهُ بَلَغَنِي أَنَّهُ يُوقَفُ الْعَبْدُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِذَا كَانَ مُعْذِمًا لِلْدُّنْيَا A servant will be detained and arrested on the day of Qiyama who has the greatness of dunya in his heart. And it will be said, فَيُقَالْ هَذَا عَذُمَ مَا حَقَرَهُ اللَّهِ Thus, is the person we are arresting him, we stopping him, we detaining him because he has glorified, he has exalted, he has revered such an entity which Allah has despised and degraded. So our actions display we have revered dunya, we have put dunya on a pedestal because your life and your time and your wealth is utilizing those avenues. Ibn Masood used to say, مَا أَسْبَحْ أَدُمْ مِنَ النَّاسِ إِلَّا وَهُوَ ضَيْفٌ Each of you every day remember, you are a guest, وَمَا لُهُ عَارِيَةٌ And your wealth is just a loan, it's been borrowed to you, it's an amana. وَالضَيْفُ مُرْتَحِلٌ And this guest will leave, you are this guest and you're going to depart one day. And this amana, should be returned. Allah has given you all these amanat, you have to return it. So a person's either on the road of dunya or on the road of akhirat. When, when a ship is getting ready to leave, then the anchor is lifted up, preparation to set sail. Have we prepared to set sail in this journey of akhirat or not? He said about Rabi'ah al-Adawiyah al-Basriyah once some friends visited and they were discussing about dunya so Chandi when friends meet you discuss the different topics so when she heard it she said Uskutu an dhikriha what are you talking about? فَلَوْ لَا مُنْقِعُهَا مِنْ قُلُوبِكُمْ مَا أَكْثَرْتُ مِنْ ذِكْرِهَا if Dunya never had a spot or place in your heart, you wouldn't have been speaking about it. The grandeur, the greatness of dunya, you would not have been speaking about it. Allah, Allah, man ahabba shay'an akthara min dhikrihi. Remember, whoever loves something speaks about it excessively. Whoever loves something speaks about it excessively. So we need to see. What am I speaking more about? What words on my tongue daily? Is it about sports? Is it about politics? Is it about people? Is it about 
the greatness of Allah. It is, is it about the Sunnah of Janabi Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is it about Qabr? Is it about Hashar? Is it about Pul Sirat? Is it about preparation for the year after or preparation for dunya? So we need to be checking ourselves all the time and see that where is my focus, where is my attention, where am I utilizing my energy to? Sayyid Luqman Hakim told his son once, Ya Bunaya bi'a dunyaka bi akhiratika, tabahuma jabi'an. If you need to do a transaction in a business deal, then sell your dunya in exchange for akhirat, you'll have the most amount of profits and capital and benefits. You'll have an all encompassing deal. Wala tabi'a akhiratika bi dunyaka. And don't ever consider selling your deen for dunya, otherwise you will be completely at loss. So daily our actions are gauged and a judge to show what love we have, what our aspirations, what our ambitions, what is our focus in life and where is our attention turning to? Are we people of dunya or people of akhirat? The person does have no assets of Akhirat, then he doesn't bother about securing it. Shaitan has nothing to steal, why bother? Person doesn't have amals. When the love for Akhirat is in our hearts, we'll be worried about procuring and protecting our amal. So when you have nothing, a person doesn't, doesn't bother when there's nothing in the heart. You say a wife woke up one day and there was a strange noise in the middle of the night. So she nudged the husband as he was snoring and said, wake up, wake up. There's a burglar in the house. So the husband tired, said, all right, all right. And he was unconcerned. She said, but there's a burglar in the house. There's a burglar in the house. So he told the wife, go back to sleep. What are you worried about? Go back to sleep. So this wife was quite perturbed. She said, don't you understand? Somebody has broken. So again, he was upset. He said, keep quiet. You know very well, we have nothing worth stealing. You still want me to go downstairs and admit to a total stranger that we have nothing? Have you got no shame? Have you got no shame? So people who do not have akhirat don't bother whether they salat, whether they tilawat, whether they zikr, whether they engage in sin, there's nothing to lose. Dunya is Darul Jaza, what comes around goes around. Whatever we prepare here, Mazrautul Akhira. It's a preparation for the Akhirat. Come on to Deen, to Dan. As you do, so will be done upon you. As you love, so shall you die. There was an Oriental man sitting in a restaurant in Chinatown when a Jewish person suddenly came up and tipped the bowl of fried rice over his head. So the Jew said, that's for Pearl Harbor. So the man cried and said, but I'm Chinese. I'm Chinese. So the Jewish person didn't bother. He said, whether you're Chinese, Japanese, Siamese, whatever it is, you're all the same. So the, the Chinaman got upset. He picked up his plate of soup and he threw it over the Jew. And he said, that's for sinking the Titanic. That's for sinking the Titanic. So the Jews scream, but the Titanic was sunk by an iceberg. The sunk by an iceberg. So the gentleman replied, whether it's Goldberg, Greenberg or iceberg, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. So dunya is like that. So when the love of dunya comes so much, then even we lose the value of life and the importance of life and those things which supposed to put value and supposed to have value. He said it was a wealthy Jewish person who was traveling down a steep hill when the taxi scream, the driver scream, the brakes have gone, the brakes have gone. So hearing this, the Jew also scream, stop the meter, stop the meter, stop the meter. Yeah, your life is going and you are in about the meter. So dunya is like that. 
and it's all about extortion on every level. But there's no trust left in the Ummah illa mashaAllah. In every tabqa illa mashaAllah. Hard to find somebody who gives his word and sticks to it. A person will sell his soul to make some money. He will do his own brother down, his own father down. Only for wealth. So it's only about extortion. You see there was a lawyer's dog who ran, it wasn't leash, and it went to the butcher's shop and stole some meat. So the butcher was upset, he went straight to the lawyer's office and he asked the lawyer, tell me if a dog running unleash steals a piece of meat from my store, do I have a right to demand payment for the meat from the dog's owner? So the lawyer replied, definitely. Then he said, okay, so then you owe me? $80. Your dog was loose and he stole some meat from me today. So the lawyer took out his checkbook and wrote the check. So the butcher was surprised normally, it's not so easy. But two days later, when the butcher opened his mail, he found a bill from the lawyer for $200 legal consultation. Legal consultation. Sometimes we think so, we're winning, but dunya is a place of extortion. There was a lawyer's son who wanted to follow in his father's footsteps. So he went to school, graduated with his degree honors, and then he joined the father's firm. So after the first day, he ran to his father happily excited. He said, guess what? On my first day, I've cracked the accident case you've been working for in the last four years. I've cracked it. So the father became red and upset and he said, you fool, why do you think we put you through law school? Why do you think we put you through law school? It's not to solve the problem, it's to extend the problem. So extortion. Somebody went to a lawyer for help. So he asked him, what are your fees? So the lawyer said $50 for three questions. So the person said, don't you think that is very expensive? So the lawyer said, uh, possibly, yeah, but that's my rates. And now what's your third question? Now, what's your third question? So dunya, so much love of dunya that we've lost humanity, we've lost his, we've lost feelings, we've lost all humanity. The lady phoned the firm and asked to speak to Mr. Hansen. So it was her ex-husband. So his ex said, I'm sorry, but he, Mr. Hansen has passed on last week. So 10 minutes later, again, the phone rang, same voice. Can I speak to Mr. Hansen? Secretary said, I'm afraid that's not possible. As I told you a few moments ago, Mr. Hansen had died last week. Again, 10 minutes later, she gets another phone call in the same voice. Secretary got upset and said, look, I've told you twice, he's dead. Why do you keep phoning me? Don't you understand? Don't you understand? So the caller said, though, ex-wife, sure, I understand well. I just enjoy you, I just enjoy hearing you say it over again and again and again. I enjoy hearing that. So dunya is about extortion, about this, uh, deception. The friends were waiting in the bank queue when uh, armed robbers came in. So while after gang was over the counter and the others were busy, just before the gang reached the friends, one friend gave his other friend $50 and says, here's the money I owe you. Yes, the money I owe you. So we cannot understand, underestimate the value of dunya. This person was in a car crash, the car was rubbed to pieces in his arm as well. So the policeman came to the scene, he was in a shock and he was saying, my car, my car, there's a brand new BMW. So the policeman seen the injury, said, I think you need to concern yourself about your arm. So the lawyer looked down at his hand and he started screaming, my Rolex, my Rolex, my Rolex, my Rolex, that's the dunya. The amal for today is, to protect 
the private parts. There was a story of three people who were in a cave and through one of the three abstained from zina and adultery and Allah subhanahu wa opened up the cave. So let me explain like how amal will open up difficulties in dunya when we abstain from sin. It will protect us from the difficulties of akhirah wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillah ya rabbil alameen.